What's going on? That's rubbish. This is rubbish. I'm covered in lemonade. <laughs> You disappoint me, and it's not worked. And it's doing absolutely nothing. <laughs> no! <laughs> Hello everybody, it's Barry here. Hope you are well. Welcome to my kitchen and another kitchen gadget testing video. At the end of this video, if you've missed any others, don't forget to have a marathon, put on your sweatband and check out the rest. Uh, before commenting down below, also as well remember that some of these gadgets can help people uh, with disabilities and help them in the kitchen with certain tasks. Others are of course complete novelty. And as for our first gadget today, well, we've already started. We've already started. The oven's supposed to beep. I tried to time it. We've already started. We've already started. <laughs> Anyone for pizza? It's nine o'clock in the morning. Some would say a bit too early for pizza. Leftovers, debatable, but pizza. We've just cooked pizza because this, ladies and gents, our first gadget today is the pizza scooter, which actually seems to come in a bit like a handbag, like this, I quite like it. So hopefully this scooter is gonna blast its way through our pizza. All right then folks, so I've just given it a little wash uh, like I do with most gadgets. Not gonna show you that scene apart from for one bit later on, as you'll see. Oh my gosh, it's like a proper scooter, look. You flip it down. I hope. <laughs> Look at that! That's actually really cool. It's huge as well. I guess you're gonna push down with one motion and you're gonna follow through with it. Oh, make sure the back wheel goes completely straight with it or you could go skew if. But there we Look at that! That's awesome! And then you can push down, go through. Ugh. And you could probably get a bit creative and almost do like a curve through it. <laughs> the world's smallest pizza we used to get at a school kids party. I did a tweet about that the other day. Turns out the teachers paid for most of those pizzas though. It's brilliant. I love how you can just sort of leave it on display. We'll just put it over there in the background, but that, that's literally all done. And what I actually do need for later on in the video is uh, to dirty a plate. We'll come back to those in a bit. And this, is gonna be my epic lunch later on. There we go. This next part of the video is very kindly sponsored by Tfal. So it's an ad, ching, 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 ching. But that's great, because I love it, because as you know, I use a lot of Tfal products anyway, and they've sent me this awesome air fryer. It's called the Genius XL ActiFry air fryer thing. But the cool fact I found out was that Tfal actually created the very first air fryer. And for me, as a gadget enthusiast, I found that very exciting. You're probably wondering, oh Barry, you're so strong. How do you, I've already, I've already opened it. Uh, for the last couple of days, I've been testing this thing out. There it is down there, it looks amazing. Like some sort of black space helmet thing. It's so cool. I wanted to set myself the challenge of not just, you know, I think everyone gets an air fryer and they make chips. Uh, so I wanted to make myself a three course meal uh, over the last few days and I've been blown away by it. Check this out. <laughs> We've got loads of mozzarella left from the video that you did yesterday, so the girls have been looking up a recipe on the app. Any luck? And um, we found mozzarella and sun-dried tomato samosas. Oh, that sounds yummy. Yeah. Is that how you pronounce it? I think so. First step, cut up the mozzarella, and then you cut up the pastry. God. They smell like, like being abroad, don't they? Ooh. Make sure they're not on top of each other, alright guys? Look, they're all in there, you made it. They're all in. <laughs> You're on a boat. Mode four for 15 minutes. Oh, oh wow. wow. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's get them out. Next up, we're gonna do our main, which is butter chicken. I've got Barry over there cutting the chicken. All right. All right. Yeah. yeah, chicken cutter. <laughs> okay. Good. Um, we're going to use up uh, a jar of sauce that we've had left over in the cupboard. Oh, that smells amazing. Mode 5, 28 minutes. It's not the easiest recipe ever. It is. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, baby. All right, so we're enjoying our dinner. Uh, the samosas, they've almost gone. For, oh, hang on, I've got to tell you what they think. These are like so good. Obviously not traditional to go alongside a curry with the flavorings we had in the middle, but we just used up the ingredients we had there. Did you like the curry? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. All good? Really enjoying it. Did feel a little bit lazy. Was like, good. I was kind of like, this dinner, dinner done like that, I just put the rice on. But like, yeah, really impressed. What's the mm. pudding? 
What's for pudding? Yeah. Oh, you're about to find out. We're gonna do something I've never done before and didn't even realize you could do. Apparently, in this, one of its nine cooking modes, we can make a cake. So this is a cake on the Tfal app. If this fails, Tfal, it's, 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 it's you. Look, chocolate caramel marble cake. And it's got one of those crazy cool things where you can set timers and all that sort of stuff. But be obviously doing what I do, filming it in real time, it's gonna be hard to actually follow that. But it has got everything you need. So we are gonna start by greasing the cooking pan in the Actify with butter. And all this while our scooter just patiently sits in the background. So we washed it all up. You can actually put all of this in the dishwasher or other than the electrical component. I know that's the sort of thing I would do, but don't do that. Everything else you can take apart and it's amazing. So easy to clean. Um, but we can take this out, lift that out, and this suddenly has become a bunt tin, okay, for our cake, because we're doing a sort of bunt vibe. I was thinking, how do we get it out? This, this is it. Grease that up. Make sure I grease the middle bit as well as we've learned from making bunt cakes in the past. If you do not do that, um, <laughs> it will not want to come out. And I believe other versions um, of the air fryers, you might want to actually line it with baking parchment. That's fine, but the app is telling me not to. So we're gonna, you know, we're putting it on the line here. There we go, wax on, wax off, Karate Kid style. Saucepan, sugar, water, and some honey. So that's just gonna run inside there. And as this warms up, it's gonna to start to form a caramel, okay? So this is obviously the key ingredient to chocolate and caramel marble cake. Right, this is where it might sizzle a little bit. So I'm gonna slowly add in the butter. And then the cream. It's about 120 mils of that, apparently. All right, so that is that all done. And we leave some of this for the very end. Some of it's going in the cake. All right, so we're gonna prepare the batter now. Uh, oil, sugar, let's whisk it. Uh, four eggs. Now the flour and a sachet, which is normally about a teaspoon of baking powder. Separate the mixture into two equal bowls. Like that. Uh, now you can weigh these out, that's what Mrs. Barry does, but I'm pretty old school, I wanna do it by eye, and they look about right. Whoops. So the cocoa powder is going in one half and half of our caramel sauce mixture is going into that batter. The rest of it is gonna to top it at the end. So we stir it through. Beautiful. Chocolate, caramel, our batters are now ready to be cooked as a cake in an air fryer. Amazing. We do chocolate batter, three tablespoons, uh, then the caramel, like a kind of zebra thing. I mean, if I make a mess, that's fine because Oh, look at that. Oh, wow. <laughs> I mean, it's gonna be marbled anyway, isn't it? I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this exact, but I'm gonna do my best. It is pushing the batter out though. I like that a lot. You get the idea? So this is gonna take me a little while. I need to concentrate, so uh, we'll see you in a minute. I'm rather happy with that. That's not something you see every day. So I've moved it from this side to here so we can concentrate on some other gadgets whilst this cooks away. Just a bit of foil on here now, not touching the batter apparently. Literally in 45 minutes, we should have a, a cake. Have you ever been in a situation where you've got two dirty pizza plates that you need to clean? Like these, is this thing. How do I explain this? I know, I'll just tell you exactly what it is. This is the soap pump and sponge caddy. Perfect for your golf courses. Uh, it's basically a soap dispenser where you uh, put in those sort of square, you know, stereotypical green and yellow. Why are they always green and yellow? Uh, sponges that you put in there, you put soap in and it dispenses it directly onto the sponge so you can then slather the, the dirty plate so you're washing up. Let's have a look. Yeah, like one of these things, right? Um, so you'd normally be uh, washing, oh my gosh. I bought a pack of these specifically. It's fine, we go through these a lot. Um, but it already comes with one. How kind. This is basically it, okay? So this acts as the pump, okay? This, this, that's actually gonna pull the soap up. And what we do is fill the base uh, with standard soap that you buy in a supermarket or you're washing up liquid. Like this. I went for the color blue. I actually stood there and thought about it in the supermarket for a little bit. I was like, hey, if I go for yellow, then Will people be able to see it on the sponge? And if I go for green, so I went for blue. Okay, important life decisions. We push this down. Does that lock on place? I should have checked that. And what we're gonna do is, we're gonna actually just do it without the sponge. Are you ready? Here we go. It should come through that little cross there. No? Why aren't you pumping? You're supposed to put your sponge on and go, ooh. And it should be, <laughs> what's going on? 
It's getting to there. I mean, it doesn't matter. I've got a dishwasher and plenty of washing up liquid. We can get by, but <laughs> that should work. I even went for blue, like on the box. Look, it can't get any more accurate. What's going on? That's rubbish. That is so bad. I might just water it down. Sorry about this. If you've got one of these, let me know how you do it, because that's just, I've done everything it's saying. Stick him in a dishwasher then. Well, that wasn't very good, was it, mate? Anyhow, hopefully this one, this one will be better. This has been one of my most favorite, this is gonna sound so weird, <laughs> my favorite jar openers that's been in my gadget box in the garage for ages. I've got a few, but this one stood up quite a bit. This, because this one, look, you kind of get the idea. I'm twisting this handle, right? And it's, it's kind of like you can feel like a cowboy like lassoing your jar lids. So it's a tool designed to help people open jars. Um, and obviously we know that that can be quite tricky. Tends to be trickier if it's more of a, a jar that's been sealed. You just did it. So we'll start off, this is um, just like a standard sized um, jar of child grilled peppers, which is one of my favorite things, I like making in an omelet. You can make omelets in that air fryer as well, by the way. Wrap it around, all right, and then tighten it. Oh, wow. So it pulls it to it like that. Oh my gosh. I hope you heard that pop. That was the safety seal. So I just really want to make sure I got it tightened. And then if I let, I'm going to hold this and just turn. That's amazing. That's my mind blown face. That's amazing. Wow. That was so easy. Some cheese dip straight on there. Not gonna over tighten it too much this time, but then just literally. Oh, that was a tough one. And, but it did it. Boom, and what a noise. Last but not least is this beast of a tub that your granddad would say would normally use this. This is like pickled cabbage, which is actually quite nice. Um, but your granddad would normally go, oh, once you finish with that jar, let me put some pickled onions in it for Christmas. So yeah. Oh, oh, I didn't actually. I didn't even get that on properly, but that's bloody well done it. That was hardly any effort. So I think that can really help people. Ugh. So as fun as having some pizza and fingers crossed some really nice cake uh, for lunch, I'm also in the mood for crisps and not just any crisps. I want to make um, some, oh no, the label's <laughs> got in the way. Uh, potato chips, potato chips. So apparently this thing, it slices, microwaves and serves. So serving isn't really three steps, maybe it's two steps. We're gonna get a potato and we can julienne it on the top, which is amazing. And then it's got a vessel down below that can go into the microwave. Let's go. Uh, we've got the uh, gripper thing, okay, which is gonna slide up and down the blade, okay? So this is gonna slice it very sharp indeed, gonna julienne the potatoes. And inside here, you might recognize, for those of you that have a marathon, uh, from a previous gadget video, this is basically like a thing that you put in your microwave and it sort of separates the potato slices out and microwaves them and does make uh, instant crisp. So I'm kind of thinking if we can make this work, we can then put this in the bowl and shake it up with our own seasonings on, like salt and pepper or any flavor, paprika. <laughs> this is brilliant. I'm, I'm gonna quit while I'm ahead because we are making some amazing potato slices. Look at that. But if I really wanted to be over the top now, I'd probably pat dry all the starch off, but you don't actually microwave it in this bowl. This is your serving vessel. Apparently if you put this in the microwave, it'll melt. Don't do that. My dad did that once. But we take a potato like that and we put it, look, it's falling over. It's cut it so thin. This was my concern with it. Yeah, it's flopping over. So every other groove I'm gonna, or maybe even two on that case, put a potato chip in. That, in my opinion, is a little bit of a fail on its part because if it cut it a teeny bit thicker, it would allow you to fill all of these pockets up. Okay, sitting in there quite nicely. Oh, that one's tried to escape. Get back in. My microwave is really low wattage and it's only been... Oh wow. <laughs> Look at that! Oh my gosh, it's burnt. One of them's burnt. Ah, oh, no. That's done already. That's like one and a half minutes early. The texture and the weight feels good. That's a crisp. 
but you're not supposed to do this. I like to live dangerously. I'm going to put it back into the serving vessel. So this is how you would do it. You finish it by putting it in there. But I'm going to shimmy a little bit of salt on. Oh, you're yeah, buddy, oh, yeah. <laughs> No, this is a pass. The wattage on my microwave was a little bit lower, so I thought it was going to need the full four minutes, but that's a surprise. That's actually worked. 10 seconds to go. I am feeling very confident. The only doubt in my mind is the fact that I've never done this before. So putting the foil on it means I'm a little bit obstructed from what I can see. It's done. Oh. Oh! <laughs> I think my foil pressed it down at the back. It's a bit dented, but that looks amazing. That looks like some crazy marbled brioche thing. Wow, okay. Very happy with that. I'm gonna let it fully cool and then we'll get it out. This next one I've had for so long. It's been in my <laughs> gadget box. It just like fell to the bottom that um, there's no packaging around it. I remember what it is though. And I did tweet about it as well and a lot of you guys helped me out. So this is a can opener, okay? Uh, and not in like a tin can kind of way to help you open a tin of beans, something like that. No, this is more for like fizzy drink beverages. Um, so what it has is this sort of handle. Is it there? There it is. It opens up like that. You put your can and drink on that on top, push that in to lock it in, twist it, and you should be able to take the top of the lid of a fizzy drink can off. I don't know, I've got six cans of fizzy drink and they have not been shooken up because poof, that would go everywhere. Um, let's see if this works. All right, so I've got myself a can of lemonade and what's gonna happen is hopefully it will take off uh, this entire top part. So that goes in, we then push this as hard as we can, okay, and push down and twist. Wow, yeah, this isn't gonna help many people. <gasps> That just did something. I can feel beverage coming out. <laughs> it's done something, <laughs> what? It's okay, I've got five more cans. <laughs> no, what's going on? I'm getting a lot of lemonade out of this. Look, can you see, that's what it's supposed to do. It's got the instructions there, exactly what I just did. That is crazy. I just tried a third can and it didn't work. Ah, 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 ah. Oh my gosh. This is rubbish. I'm covered in lemonade. I'm gonna try it with a different type of can. Uh, don't know if this is gonna work. You disappoint me. I'll order another one of these and we'll do a follow-up video because I really wanted that to work. I had ice and limes and everything ready. And Mrs. Barry's gonna come home and it's gonna look like I've had some sort of wild party on my own. <laughs> I love this as well, look, I can go like, hey, I'm just gonna carry a cake around my house. Da -da 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 -da. Okay. Oh, it's popped right out, amazing. Ah, that's like a donut. Yes. Oh my gosh. That's worked out really well. But apparently what I do is get some extra of that caramel sauce from before and let it just pour on there. Find its way into the grooves. I've got one more gadget to review, and then we'll have a taste of this. Have you ever been in a situation where you're like, ah, oh, this popcorn is so nice, but no, I'm gonna hold back. I'm gonna be good, I'm gonna seal it. Back together, uh, well you, you can, with the Ziploc bag thing as well. This thing right here is, um, <laughs> it just says Korea type. Mini ceiling. Gently pull, good quality fresh. The English on here is not amazing, but it should still work. This is it, um, there are some AA batteries that I put in earlier, uh, that goes in there. That's just a magnet. So you can just go, hey. Time to seal things up. So what you're supposed to do is get a, a packet like this, and by using this together, this is literally a sealer. Okay, so we pinch it. And I don't know if that puts some heat out or something. There's no buttons for me to press. And I just run that along. Like that. Ugh. And it's not worked.
pull it through slower. <laughs> what is going on today? I, I have a backup, don't worry. This other one's slightly higher quality as well. It's got, that's the magnet bit for it, but that acts as the lock, so you can't press it down accidentally. But when you pull that thing away, <laughs> there we go. Uh, it can now close like that. And that looks like two little pads, like a Velcro thing. And there's another bit at the back there, like plasticky. Oh, that doesn't sound good, does it? <laughs> oh gosh. Where do the batteries go? Like, this is ridiculous. I think they go in here, but it doesn't, yeah, that's, oh, that's coming off. All right, there we are. We are back in business. We're gonna do something a bit easier, okay? This is really what I first saw it on. So imagine you've got a Ziploc bag, and you're like, oh my gosh, I cut the top off it, and now I've just got a, an unlocked bag, and um, I need to store this plastic in it. So what you do, uh, obviously the plastic is, is played by plastic when it should be food. Uh, you get that on there, and you pinch that together, and you slide it along, like that, and it's doing absolutely nothing. <laughs> no! It's gotta be that battery, hasn't it, surely? All right, where's the TV remote? Okay, solid sound. It has to be the batteries. Please, please, please. Let's try, so we pinch this together, like this. That did make a bit of a clicky noise when I did that then. <laughs> what? What is going on? I'm going back to this one. There's no way that two of them could fail, surely. So that's an open bag, all right? We'll go back twice. We'll push down and I'm gonna take my time. That is doing something because like it's making a line across the bag. That's actually done it. That's done it! It was the batteries and one of them was broken. God! Yeah, what happens is that just heats together when you press it. But let's do that again. Open a bag of tortillas. Oh no, I don't need my tortillas anymore. Oh no, you can go quite quick actually. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. I love that. That is so good. Right. I really don't think I should do this, but I did see it on the trailer uh, for this video. It was like a movie, it had a trailer. And that brings us back to our failed lemonade earlier. So what they did was they had a beverage in a bag like this, and they did this. They went across first. <laughs> no, they're so tatty. That's not gonna work. Well, it's done some of it. That's gonna be a bit easier for me to get to now anyway. Let me do it again. Right, across quite quickly. Like that, okay, okay. And hopefully, I did think that was a bit weird. It did work. The one that I was trying to do, they actually did manage to divide the bags like vertically. They like went up and it divided into individual like drink portion bags. We couldn't even get to that point. Well, I think after all that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a slice of cake and I'm not gonna feel guilty about it whatsoever. That was pretty hard going. <gasps> oh, oh that, is, that is really good. Wow. I'm just in time for cake. You've just, yeah, <laughs> I was just about to say. I think because it's oil based, it's like moist and like brownie-like. 
It's absolutely stonking. It's, it's kind of like a fudgy brownie marble cake. I love it. And the sauce on top just reinvigorates it. I'm actually over the moon by this air fryer. So thank you again for TFAL for sponsoring a segment of this video. I just wanted to make something other than chips. And I think mm. the kids are going to love this. We have genuinely been impressed by it. Which for the rest of the other gadgets in this video, generally, actually there was one or two that are pretty good. The scooter started off well. There might not be any left for the kids. <laughs> the air fryer stood out though. Thanks guys, don't forget to subscribe for regular videos, check out the rest of the gadget videos. If you see any cool ones, let me know down below, and I'll see you next time. Mmm. Gotta get changed my shorts. Take your level player, no matter what your style, the kitchen's for me, Simon's moustache, goatee, maybe all three. The Queen of Suds. That's what I'm going to call you today. Queen of Suds. <laughs> Mrs. Moose. Mrs. Barry, the Queen of Suds, okay? Yes. Has made this work. Yes, because you just had to pump it. I was, I was pumping yeah, it for ages. Yeah, but I took it out, and you know when you open up a new soap in the bathroom? Yeah. <laughs> when, you, when I open up a new soap in the bathroom, I normally, you normally have to pump it a few times. That was for ages, pumps. I got footage of that. Well, I just took it and apart. And it back to life. And I just run it under the tap, and now look. But look at that. It comes out. Can we get so down? So I don't know what you did. Well, I did that. So yeah, the point it, is, you're supposed to go, it might, you just literally go like that. So you get enough soap on your thing, and then you just <coughs> go like that. Or the other way, yeah. I've got the sponge the wrong way. Why did you use both sides? Yeah. I only use that for stubborn stains. You might have just got it like um, it clogged up. Because I did take it out and put a little drop of water through it. What I don't get though is once you get it dirty, oh, I suppose you're going to be in, you normally be doing it in water and then you go down again, otherwise you're going to get all dirt there, aren't you? Yeah.